Hey folks, I'm Lucy and joining me is our Cyberpunk 2077 reviewer Callie Plaguey. Hello. And Jake Decker, who has also been playing a bunch of Cyberpunk. Oh yeah, almost 45 hours now? That's a lot. But before we get into what the two of them thought of the game, just a quick note up front about why this isn't our traditional review format featuring bespoke video footage that we've captured ourselves. That is because there are two different embargoes for Cyberpunk and today's is the written embargo. That means that Callie can post her written review featuring images that she has captured in game, but not with video that we have captured ourselves. That is under a separate embargo. So that means like this video, subscribe to GameSpot to make sure you can watch the video review when it's ready or head over to GameSpot.com now if you want to read Callie's full review. So just wanted to get that note. Uh, we have our official video review coming with our own footage uh, as soon as we are able to. So housekeeping is out of the way. Let's get into it. The two of you, how much have you played uh, and which life path did you both pick? Callie, I'll come to you first. Um, I've played 50 hours so far. I am at the very end, but I keep hitting a freezing bug, which we'll get to. So I haven't finished it, but I've, I've basically, look, I've almost finished it. Um, and I've done a bunch of side stuff. I picked the Nomad Life Path, um, cause I thought it would make more sense on like the, if, you know, this is the first time I'm playing the game. I don't know the city. That's like the background of a nomad. So I decided to go with um, Yeah, you, you are an outsider yourself just as V is in the game. So that makes total sense to me. Right, yeah. that, was, that was the idea. And Jake, anyway. what about you? Yeah, so I picked Nomad for my first playthrough. I think it took me about 40 hours or so. And today I just started one as a corpo. So I've seen those two life paths as of now, but I have finished the game. I have seen multiple endings at this point just by, save scumming essentially right and and so i guess that means there is a specific moment in the game where it's like this is the point of no return yeah i think that's worth pointing out is that you will get to a point where it will say hey finish up all the side quests you want to do because you're about to get to the final section of the game gotcha which is kind of reassuring because from the sounds of it it does have a bunch of endings and i mean a quick question before we get into like the deeper kind of nitty gritty of it is like are these endings do they vary much I I want to I don't want to say a whole lot on this, okay. but it seems like yes, they do seem okay. to vary a lot, and it seems like your choices on endings will depend on which characters you help out through the game. Kind of similar to The Witcher in some sense, but if I remember correctly, The Witcher had about three major endings, and this seems to have significantly more than that. But right now, it's really hard to say because, like I said, I've only done one playthrough. So yes, we'll see. All right. Well, you mentioned characters there, so that seems a good a segue as any uh, to talk about the characters that we'll encounter in Night City. But we'll start by talking about the one who has been in our hearts, I guess, and at the forefront of most of the marketing. It's going to be Keanu Reeves playing Johnny Silverhand. Now, Callie, when you were playing, what did you think of Keanu's portrayal? How is he as a character and interacting with you as V? It's, from my point of view, I just hope that it's not just another celebrity in a game. You know, he's like really taking on this role and giving it his, his all. Oh, I, I would say it's definitely more than just another celebrity in a game. Like I, the thing about Johnny Silverhand is that he's a huge asshole. He's such a douche. <laughs> and that's part of his character and it makes sense. Um, and it's, you know, it's a testament to Keanu's performance that I actually liked Johnny Silverhand despite all the shit he says, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> and I should say, this is going to be probably an M-rated review because there's a lot of uh, swearing in the game and a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of heavy topics, so I'm just going to go for it. But um, yeah, he he makes Johnny Silverhand like a nuanced, likable character. I mean, I think the writing does that as well, but I, I think I, I don't know that I would have liked him as much if he had been played by somebody else. Um, I, thought, I thought he was really well done. Uh, I thought like his um, d like delivery of the the dialogue was really strong, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he's a fascinating character. Johnny Silverhand is is uh, complex. He's, <laughs> he's a lot. He's just a lot. Um, and yeah, there's a there's a quest that like really opens up who he is and opens up like uh, more to his, more sides to him that I really really liked and it helped deepen my appreciation for the character a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I texted Jake this 
after seeing one sequence that involved a lot of drinking and I was like, I am shocked Johnny Silverhand didn't die choking on his own vomit because wow. <laughs> like that's the vibe. Like if that, uh -huh. if there's one thing I could say about him to like get across what kind of person he is, that's mm -hmm. probably what I would say. Like that, for the the basic stuff. That I was gonna say that really uh, explains him in a very, very specific way that I can imagine what kind of character he is. Um, Jake, what about how you as a character interact with Johnny's Hilberhand? Because it's not just like, well, he's in your head. Yeah, this was actually probably one of my favorite aspects of the game is just how involved he is in all these quests. Like, like I think Callie brought up a really good point about how Keanu Reeves really sells this character. Like the writing is good, but I do not think I would like Johnny Silverhand nearly as much if it didn't have the charm of Keanu Reeves. And I think that's very intentional. I imagine CD Projekt Red knew that, like they needed someone with a lot of charm. Otherwise he might be a very hard character to like, but he appears in almost all of the side quests, the main quests you do in some form or another. Sometimes he'll just be there to make fun of you because you'll make a dumb decision. Sometimes he'll be there to egg you on to push things further than you probably should while other times to just be like hey v you should get the f out of here you don't want anything to do with this and you just kind of have the option to ignore him and i think for me that's one of the strongest aspects of his character and the story is how he is very much his own character and he doesn't necessarily like v right off the bat so there's like this sort of antagonistic feeling you get through i'd say probably a majority of the game which i i think works um, for the most part and mm -hmm. just having that as Keanu Reeves too kind of helps kind of helps you not hate him because I think if it wasn't Keanu Reeves you might very well hate him as much as V does at times but like I don't I don't know you'll be in a conversation with someone he won't be interested in and he'll just hop on the bed and like kick his feet up and just make fun of everything they say and I I, I really enjoyed that yeah I yeah just to Jake's point like I think I really want to reiterate, like, there's a lot about Johnny that is not uh, <laughs> likable. Like, he does, doesn't treat women very well, or, like, historically when he was alive, I guess. Um, but his presence in every scene is so strong, and it really gives stuff that maybe wouldn't be as interesting a lot more flavor mm -hmm. um and yeah i think one of my favorite things is when he gets really invested in something you're doing and is like no you should really go see what's that over there you should go see what's going on um that he yeah he provides a lot of color to everything you do and i i would say he's he's also one of my favorite uh parts of the game and yeah i i agree really really strongly with jake too here yeah but there's some moments where he gets so invested in whatever side quest you're doing that he'll just be like v this is the most entertainment i've had for a long time you have to follow through and it'll just be like some dumb quest that doesn't make any sense but you're like all right i'm gonna keep going yeah. just for keanu here that's fair but it's obviously there are more yeah. way more characters in night city than just uh keanu's portrayal of johnny like with callie were there any other standouts like how did you feel that the characters added to the storyline were there ones that were like just specific standouts and the rest were kind of meh or is it a good mix of writing across all these different characters um yeah i would say there were some standouts like i think there's there's two characters in particular that i really really loved the first one is judy i won't go into her too much but her quest is like i think the my favorite one that i did mm -hmm. um it's like a you know there's like characters that have longer form quests that mm -hmm. you go on um, throughout the story and you kind of have to like wait for them to call you and have a problem and she's one of those and I thought it was really rich I really enjoyed it it like fit my personal brand in a way that I can't explain without spoiling it like I just loved everything about her and then the other one first I love her because of her name her name is Pan Am like the <laughs> airline yeah like her story is about friendship and like finding family and I, I really really loved her as far as like the other characters go, I would say like most of the other characters are pretty minor. Like you have mm -hmm. people who will call you from time to time and be like, I got a job for you. And they're just random fixers who like set you up with gigs. And they're like, they're good like background color characters. But mm -hmm. um, I would say like there's there's some uh, core characters that that really rise to the top. Jake, you and I did a video a while ago with Phil Hornshaw talking about, you know, sex and relationships and cyberpunk and, you know, 
Phil was giving some answers about what it's like to be interacting with these characters, and you know, you text in them, and you talk to them, and obviously you can sleep with them. Did those relationships feel meaningful? Like, and I mean, how, it, I guess, is the portrayal of sexuality in Night City? Yeah, so this is kind of one of the question marks we still have. Uh, Kelly and I both played as female V. Phil, who's also been playing, played as male V. So we're kind of waiting to see what he finds out. Uh, because based on our experience, it seems like the characters that you can have relationships with are, are kind of limited. Uh, that being said, maybe there's some quest lines we missed that show other characters that you can also uh, have sex with and whatnot. But what I guess stood out to me more is that a lot of these side characters spin off into these... Well, not a lot of these side characters, but some of the best side characters spin off into these series of quests, kind of like the Bloody Baron stuff in The Witcher. And I think many people will kind of point to that being one of the best aspects of The Witcher 3 mm -hmm. is how they really spun out that character beyond what the main story kind of gave mm -hmm. him. And it seems like a lot of these side characters kind of follow that path. Like, as Callie was saying, Pan Am has an entire quest line. Uh, Judy has an entire quest line. There's a couple other characters that have that as well and it doesn't seem like relationships are always at the end of these quest lines a lot of them are just kind of like hey i've become very good friends with this person and they might be able to help me later or you know maybe i just got some money for them and got to know their story because uh there are some characters right that like you may not get a big monetary reward for helping out but like just knowing their story is satisfying at least at least in my experience um so 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 it's weird because the romance didn't seem to play as much of a role as I expected initially. <laughs> that being said, like Phil said in the thing, you can like pay prostitutes and have sex with them. And there are a bunch of sexual encounters in the game, um, but they didn't seem like the end of the road for a lot of these relationships, which was kind of refreshing. Yeah, I had a weird um, encounter with a corpo woman oh. and the it, it didn't really like it was just a short brief thing where like I showed up at a motel and she was there and she was like, let's bang. But <laughs> I got it. Did she genuinely do like a, here's my key card? Uh, it was a text kind of. that was like, meet <laughs> oh. me here. And I showed up maybe 30 hours after that happened because I was like, I have other stuff to do, but I was like finishing up side quests and I got a dick sword out of it. So <laughs> I would say it was worthwhile, but I do want to mention I think the sex scenes are so awkward because oh, it's like really? POV porn and oh, it's like, no. it, because it's in first person. And there's there's one, there's one that I was like, this is awkward, but like kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay with it. And, but there was one that I was just like squirming in my seat. Like, I can't wait for this to be over. This is so uncomfortable. Um, I like reloaded my save and I was like, never mind. I want to be friends. <laughs> um, so it, it is weird. It's all POV. Um, so, t you know, and yeah. it, it's it's a lot. They're, they're kind of like um, montages. So you'll see like them being like, oh, like a dip like, to black stuff. And yeah, and then you'll see like their shirts off now, and you know, so it's like a you don't have to. It's not the whole. They all thing, last it, a little too long, too. They all last <laughs> too long, yeah. Before we move on from relationships and stuff, um, I did want to ask a question, because Jake, you brought up the Bloody Baron, so this question for both of you is, like, that quest has kind of transcended the game it came from. Like, when you think of good writing in video games, the quest that is always brought up is the Bloody Baron from The Witcher 3. Do you think at any point, any quest in Cyberpunk hits those highs? uh mm, yes maybe interesting <laughs> that's that's not a good answer uh but i mean like, again I, it's kind of like a shitty question because i don't want you to spoil yeah i i mean i i think the bloody baron quest line is is hard to match right, right. because the the redemption arc there and the different outcomes and the way you kind of walk away from that with a bittersweet feeling is is really powerful and i and like you're saying like that that quest line feels transcendent it's kind of hard to say at this point but i will say there are some arcs for me that that were very close to that and some missions in particular that were surprising and interesting and really added a lot to these characters um but that was me personally i'm not sure about how you felt about that callie um 
Yeah, I would say like Judy was absolutely my favorite. There's like a mm -hmm. sequence in there that is just like stunning, mm -hmm. honestly, like really like I just I wanted I regretted not saving right before because I wanted to replay it. Right. Um but I I think one of my issues with Cyberpunk 2077 is how I'm I'm not sure how these individual quests necessarily fit into the world that's being created like they they're they are cyberpunk like for example i met um a guy who used to be twins who put one consciousness in the two bodies and like that was like an interesting character i didn't follow that quest because it was like it involved like a fight and i didn't want to do brawling so i was just like well that's sure a thing and then i bounced but like um there's stuff like that where really interesting uses of the setting mm -hmm. but the world is so much, there is so much to parse. I find it very hard to parse. And so for me, um, like that's what I was looking for from some of these quests and I didn't necessarily get that. I did get like characters that I really, really liked and like mm -hmm. interesting, just like really interesting, like f you know, future stuff to grapple with. I'm, I'm, it's hard to talk about it without spoiling things. I have right. to kind of talk around things, but um, well, in that yeah. case, let me let me put this to you then, um, because this was one of my concerns going into the game. Or, I mean, I haven't played it yet, but like going into um, having the like hear about the reviews and stuff. Um, and this is also probably going to be an avenue to talk about bugs in the game. Is that I was concerned with the the sheer amount of content and the size of it, whether there would be a cohesiveness throughout the game. Yeah, that, that's that's. I, I would say I don't I don't know that there is, and right. that's something that can get a little weird. Like, it, it's interesting because you have this these like setups, like the aesthetic setup, and the background of the pen and paper game that you know twenty seventy seven draws heavily upon. Um, I, I mean, like for example, there's the Voodoo Boys in the. 2020 in cyberpunk 2020 the pen and paper game uh the voodoo boys were like a group of white boys who were appropriating like voodoo to spook people basically in this game they are like like haitian like it's a group of haitian people who um are in night city because of i believe climate change induced natural disaster in haiti so there's like a Haitian diaspora thing, which I think is an interesting backdrop. And there's a dialogue option I got very early on that you could totally miss where one of the voodoo boys indicates to you that they didn't call, they don't call themselves that. That's a name that other people gave them. And I know that was a concern people had going into this game was like, like that name is a little iffy. Um, and in changing what the voodoo boys are from the 2020 game, it made it more iffy for people and so i thought that was interesting i thought it was interesting to get a glimpse into like oh we don't that's not what we call ourselves um you like i didn't get anything like that for the valentinos um it it's just hard because i there's all of these like maybe questionable choices with some of the aesthetic stuff some of the the background of of the gangs and i didn't always see payoff from that mm -hmm. And it's a story about identity. And I think when you don't incorporate enough about identity and about the people in the world you're creating, I think that it just loses its luster a little bit. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, and in, in, in terms of content too, and like how it's focused, it, it doesn't have that, mm, it, it's hard to describe because I feel like The Witcher you had you had good reasons to do all these other quests that Geralt was given. Like, hey, Geralt's a witcher, so of course he's going to hunt monsters in his free time. Mm -hmm. And, like, he is basically just following leads with not a lot of information. So it made sense when someone's like, hey, can you help me with this thing? And Geralt would be, you know, begrudgingly accept. But with this, there is a there is a time factor that you get introduced to probably about six or seven hours in. But then you're flooded with all these side quests. Mm -hmm. and like people asking you of these favors and all of that stuff is great at least for the most part but when you kind of try to bring that into the story it's kind of at odds right because part of me is like yeah i gotta 
burn through this because there is a strong clock to this plot that I can't really ignore. But at the same time, I know that a lot of the best stuff is side content. So it's kind of weird. And there is a lot of side content. There is a ton of side content, which I sure will make some people very happy and worry other folks because I could see people spending hours and hours and hours just clearing out like gang hideouts uh, or just doing a bunch of quests, uh, helping out fixers, saving up to buy cars. Like there is a lot to do that doesn't really make sense for your character to do, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. Yeah, there's so much. I mean, there's so much that I ignored because I was like, why? Like the, the thing I mentioned earlier where there were twins that were one person in two bodies. Mm -hmm. That quest was just like, go brawl some people. And I was like, I don't have time for this. And then like, I kept getting texts from people. Like I have a car for sale. And it was like, I I got a free car. I don't like, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I don't need to buy any more cars. Um, yeah, there's so much in the game that doesn't feel necessary. And that it, like there were definitely quest lines that I did feel were necessary. And like, if somebody asked me like, which side quest should I do? I would have a list of side quests um but like i think you should absolutely do this one before you finish the game like i really right. loved it but there's a lot of stuff on the periphery that i was just like i am never going to use this like i don't i crafted like one thing there's like a whole crafting interface and like all this crafting stuff i barely touched it <clears throat> i barely updated my weapons i went clothes shopping once mm -hmm. side oh, note i went clothes shopping all the time really <laughs> I, I probably I was wasted say. so much time trying <laughs> to find pants that looked clothes. good on v because i'd find these baggy pants all the time and i'm like i don't want these i know it's better but i'm just gonna drive around to every single shop till i find the right one <laughs> i was just i had a really cute outfit from clothes i looted off of corpses so <laughs> <laughs> different strokes i guess um yeah i was like a little shirt baggy pants sort of sort of v um and i got some cute stuff but um oh i even got goggles that say bitch across the front and they matched my outfit and i was like hey, i want those I want they're, those. they were perfect i loved them um yeah the uh, yeah there's just a lot of like like i would you know, i would drive by um there would there's the, these like you know, like in Red Dead Redemption 2, you would like walk by something and it would be like an emergent thing happening and you mm -hmm. could interact with it. There's stuff kind of like that, but it was just like, help the cops catch these criminals. And I was like, what if I don't want to help the cops? And then I would just drive away. And like, I, I didn't do a single one of them because right. I just didn't see the point. So there, there's a lot like that. I wish that the world felt more essential. Um, I wish like, it, 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 it's it, God, it's so hard to describe because there's so much you know, but I, I did some quests and I was like, I don't understand what that was trying to say even, like, let alone why I, like, I was just following it because I was curious, but I was kind of like, oh man, I got, I have more important things to do. And to Jake's point, like, there's no actual clock, but it feels like, uh, I, I can't explain it without spoiling things, so, but like, it so feels is it like, limited. Is it like Mass Effect 3 where there was a clock like you knew that you know the reapers and all this was happening at a specific time yet the game kept giving you these side quests and realistically you're in your head you're like i don't have time for this but mm -hmm. i will go yeah. shoot cans off the citadel with you garris because the the time limit is an arbitrary thing is yes. it kind of more like that yeah it's definitely yeah. like that like you, you like kelly was saying you're not given like I may have described it. You're given a clock in the sense that like your character has something they have to do right. quickly, but there's nothing like, like you've got 10 hours to get this done before the end and we're going to start the clock now. It, it's, it's more that like, it just doesn't make sense narratively for you to be f around mm -hmm. when there's something very pressing that's going on that you need to take care of. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, yeah, so, so it's very much like Mass Effect and then it's like, yeah, I'm going to do these things because they're really good well written they're really interesting and like some of those side quests make really good use of the setting but it just it, it, it like there's this feeling in the back of your head that's like i shouldn't be doing this i, I like I, I shouldn't be doing this and i i think it's fair to say too that like kind of like what we said up front that once you finish the game it takes you back to a save and then you can kind of clear out those quests so i think a lot of that stuff is there for folks who want more out of the game and want to keep exploring, want to keep seeing that, which which is great. Like, I, I'm not one to, to be mad at more content and whatnot, mm -hmm. but like, it does feel at odds with what you're trying to do. 
I mean, part of me feels and questions that maybe it's just something that they put all of this content in to cater for so many different playstyles and so many different players, but the cohesion, like the final, the final thing, just doesn't come together as well as maybe they'd hoped. I, I think like emblematic of that is like yeah, it does feel at points like you could approach things in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. but there are certain instances of like. Like, I personally wanted to be a hacker, netrunner type. I wanted to hack my way through combat situations and stealth my way through them. I wasn't really interested in, like, typical combat. Right. And there's points where the game forces you into typical combat scenarios. And oh, I was like, I feel... it's a Deus Ex. It's a Deus <laughs> yeah. Ex. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I feel unprepared. I, I feel like... And, and I was able to use the quick, quick hacking is what it's right. called. I was able to use that to kind to to navigate my way through those fights to some extent mm -hmm. but like that's kind of what i mean by there's stuff i feel like i didn't fully explore like weapons i feel like i didn't mess with my weapons at all there's mm -hmm. a bunch of weapon attachments i didn't bother with i got mantis blades like way later and i used them like once mm -hmm. um yeah it, it, it's it's partially, I think, a pacing issue. Part of that is the amount of time we had to play the game and how many hours we were playing every day. But like, also just the way that the game is structured, it's like I have—I felt like I had so much more to do, but I needed to go do that final right. quest. And I was like, I have barely touched. Like, I looked at my my inventory and I was like, I don't even know what half of these things are because I've just barely touched it. So you mentioned you—you know, you brought up combat there. So how? is first person combat in cyberpunk especially given you know cd project's track record of being a traditionally third person developer like does it, does combat feel good like so i i think it depends like early on i was having a bit of trouble with combat because i was so focused on shooting and i feel mm -hmm. like shooting people was one of the only options i really had mm -hmm. and at least on pc we haven't played on console so it could be very different on console but on pc it feels about as good as I expected. Uh, it, it's it's better than like a Fallout, other R other first person RPGs in that sense. Like aiming does feel smoother than that. The 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 lock on or the soft lock feels better than that. Um, that being said, like if you're expecting Call of Duty levels, it, it it's nowhere near that. But once you start to get more abilities and once you try out different things like for example i was doing a lot of hacking as was cali i think it starts to shine quite a bit more because like one example that i found really fun is when i try to stealth i have an ability that basically blinds enemies mm -hmm. so right when i see the little eye that they're about to see me i just shock their eyes and like pretty much just blow out their eye sockets and they can't see me anymore and i can just sneak around them grab them and knock them out and like that stuff i found super satisfying like i had a lot of fun with the hacking mm -hmm. but it took a while to get to that point where i felt comfortable just relying on hacking because even though i was quote unquote a net runner or hacker early on i didn't really feel like i have the tools i had the tools to do that i'm currently replaying it now to see if maybe I can lean more into that hacking ability early on. Mm -hmm. But based on that first playthrough, I felt like I had to use my guns way more than I would have liked to otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt the same way, especially because money is kind of hard to, to come by early on. And you need money to properly upgrade your hacking equipment. Like you need a better processor with more RAM in your brain in order to pull off that like, uh, the blinding enemies or there, there's a variety of stuff. I got a really cool one very late in the game that was like, I was like, this is so cool. I have to equip this right now. Um, but there's like a point early on where you have to have a certain amount of money to do to progress. And then there's another money gated thing. So it was hard to get to the point, like Jake said, where you feel like an effective hacker. Um, and yeah, I mean, I play a lot of first person shooters and I came right off the Call of Duty review, just playing Call of Duty into this review. And so it's it's not fair to compare it to Call of Duty. Like right. Jake said, it, that's just not a fair expectation, but it, it, I did find it clunky. I feel a lot with sensitivity um, and I I couldn't really find a sensitivity that I found to, to feel the way I wanted it to feel. Right. Um, which is why I was frustrated by the points in the game where you have to, you kind of have to take out a gun where, cause I was like, I really wish I could just do this the way that 
um, I've been building my character to do the whole game. Right. So, not unlike the game itself, uh, this conversation, lot to cover. Um, originally, we were only supposed to do 15 minutes, but honestly, like just chatting to you two about the game. I don't care. Let's keep going. But the big thing that I wanted to address with you guys is bugs because obviously we saw the reports and, obviously, and you had the download yourselves like you got the game and then a few days later there was a 40 something gigabyte patch to address the game has been pushed multiple times there's also going to be a day one patch Callie you even mentioned up front like you can't currently finish the final boss fight because the game is freezing how is it running you want to start it, Callie yes I want to preface this by saying most of the time when I'm reviewing a game, especially because most of the time I review a game pre-release, I'm very forgiving of technical issues because I think technical issues can be patched out and I like to focus on the fundamental issues with the game if there, there are any um, when I'm critiquing a game. But oh my God, there are so many bugs. I, I think I didn't go through a single sequence without hitting a bug. Like I, there are a lot of visual bugs like UI stuff that would stay on the screen. Um, and the, the tricky thing is, in and out. yeah, st the characters moving erratically, um, stuff floating in the air when it shouldn't be. Um, so, like, a, lo a lot of those that aren't game breaking, but just kind of like intrusive. And then, and then, you know, I had hard crashes. I have the freezing issue right now where I am going to try again because I want to see this ending, but. I, if it freezes one more time, I'm just, I'm going to lose it. I was so frustrated earlier. Yeah, there were just times where I was like, I can't tell if I'm I'm stuck because I'm dumb or like if something's not popping. And a lot of times it was because like whatever was supposed to pop wasn't popping. So that's really frustrating. Uh, obviously, it's a massive game. It just feels like the scale of this game is, is too big. There's just too much. Um, I feel that way about the fundamental narrative aspect of it and I feel that way about the level of execution on on the the moment to moment yeah I mean I've I'm playing on a very expensive PC rig and I have had an I've had an absurd amount of bugs I haven't had any crashes I haven't had any game breaking stuff there's been a few times where I've had to roll back saves because of a character maybe just didn't go to where they're supposed to go in order to progress the quest line, but usually just reloading the save fix that. But to Callie's point, the amount of visual glitches I've seen are like through the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, like Todd Howard, probably like, like <laughs> I don't want to invoke his name, but like it feels very much like a Bethesda game when I look at all of these bugs uh, because it, it really does start to take you out of the experience. And obviously, like Callie said, this is a massive game. There's a lot of, you know, QA you have to do to make sure that this game runs well. And I, like I said, it, it, it runs pretty well. I haven't had any game breaking issues. I haven't had any crashes, but the amount of people that pop into frame when they're not supposed to, the amount of like weird lighting changes that happen while I'm driving around that clearly aren't supposed to happen. Uh, the amount of characters that I've seen just rocking the good old T-pose or standing in the air or something like that is is ridiculous. I've had HUD elements stuck to my screen that aren't supposed to be there. Um, not to mention in cutscenes when characters talk when they're not supposed to. Like I had oh, yeah. a whole cuts, not, not a cutscene, but like a whole sequence, like 10, 15 minutes where a character kept saying like a throwaway line that they would say like if you bumped into them in between oh. and over the actual dialogue and i was like missing what i was supposed to be hearing yeah i had a character say like so if you don't respond quick enough in dialogue the character will normally be like v what's going on mm -hmm. but i had a bug where the character kept saying that while they were giving me the lines so it would be like v here's what i want you to do v what's going on and it would they'd just be overlapping and running over each other constantly uh so yeah, the the bug situation is is super hard to overlook. Uh, mm -hmm. I like we played, so we've gotten one patch, and I think there's supposed to be another day one patch. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they can work some of that stuff out. So by the time the people watching at home are able to play, they won't run into as much issues. But like, what's there is a lot, and I 
I, I have a hard time believing that one day one patch can really iron that stuff out. Interesting. But it kind of well, remains to be seen. Yeah, it remains yeah. to be seen. Um, obviously, we're shooting this well, uh, well ahead of time. Well, not that well ahead of time. Um, <laughs> given how long that game is. Uh, let's wrap this up then. Callie, your final review is uh, in written form over at GameSpot.com. We're going to have the video review up as soon as we can. But, I mean, it's a huge game and obviously a lot of complicated thoughts about it. It's been eight years since it's been announced. The hype levels are out of this world. Did this game meet your expectations? It was worth the wait, you know. I'm sorry about that question, because that is... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, quickly, uh, to the point of like us recording this, we've recorded this before I've started writing. <laughs> so, yes. so I, I wasn't going to be is, like, oh, and the yeah. score is... Yeah, so this is more informal, uh, my kind of like like raw unedited thoughts because I literally like I came to this remote shoot we're doing just from playing in the other room. So like um, I will mention that you can you can read my more organized thoughts <laughs> when I write them uh, now. But uh, yeah, I know it didn't meet my expectations. Um, there is so much in that story that like I, I really thought it was going to go further it was going to go places there was going to be something to say um you know i i that's my biggest issue with with cyberpunk 2077 is i don't know if it has anything to say mm. like it brings up all these things and it's like i would have been happier like if it had a point that i totally disagreed with but i can't find the point um i think there's a lot of strengths i think they're buried under like this grimy facade of this world that like I, you know, it's it's kind of hard to be in sometimes. It's a depressing world by design. Um, I wish that the game did more with that setting and with the cyberpunk genre. Um, in a lot of ways, it feels stuck in the 80s um, because that's when 2020 was made. But like, I think there's so much that could have been elevated. And it, yeah, I even hesitate to say it this way because normally I don't talk about what could have been, but like, that's what you go into this game thinking is like, this is about the, like, that's what sci-fi and like future stories are about, right? Like what could be, what, like, what am I doing here? There's something to do to like create. Could I change the world? You talk about changing the world all the time and I just didn't get that. So uh, overall I would say I was, I was disappointed. I personally, my expectations were pretty high to be mm -hmm. fair. Uh, I've been waiting for this game for a long time. I, in some aspects, yes, I would say it exceeded my expectation. I think one thing in particular was just, uh, I thought the writing, especially the side quest, the the moment-to-moment the -moment dialogue, I thought was really good, especially after playing Assassin's Creed Origins, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which clearly rip off that, not rip off that Witcher formula, but, but lean heavily on that Witcher formula and the writing to me in those games have always been subpar. However, this feels like like the, the, the moment to moment dialogue, a lot of the quests seem really interesting, what the characters have to say, I'm fully invested in. So in that sense, I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with the writing. The story is kind of another topic. I'm I, like, I've beaten it once now and I've seen multiple endings and I'm not really entirely sure what the point is either. Kind of to Callie's point, I really enjoy the combat, but I, I don't know. I guess I was expecting like a little more freedom, I guess, mm -hmm. in, in the approach. And the way the story was told, it was really hard to embrace that freedom, even though it was kind of there. But like I was saying earlier, there was that feeling throughout the entire game where it was like, okay, I'm not really doing what I want to do. I'm doing V's quest, which right. is great. And, you know, that's... One of the reasons why I love The Witcher 3 so much is because you are following Geralt's quest and Geralt's quest is very compelling. But I kind of went into Cyberpunk expecting it would be more about my story, uh, kind of like it, it, kind of like in, you know, a traditional role playing game. And this felt a bit more that I was following V's story, which would have been fine. But I don't know if V's story was as compelling as The Witcher 3. So following it, I found it a little bit tougher. Interesting. Well, um, we've been going for a long time, so I'm going to call it there. Thank you both so much uh, for hopping on. It's 
it's late already. Um, Callie, you've got to go and write that review. Um, which I don't envy you trying to distill all of those thoughts into one piece, but Godspeed. And you can go read that over on GameSpot.com. Uh, remember to like this video and subscribe for our video review and a lot more coverage of Cyberpunk. We've got a lot of things in the, uh, in the pipeline, uh, so you can watch them here. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.